Okay, kids, um, we're trying a little different this um, this week because we have so much to show you that Marty and I um, coerced our good friend Beth to come and, <laughs> and help us, and she's filming us. So, anyways, we have been warning you that we have been doing the pre-cuts and we have been doing the dis disappearing blocks. So last week we did the disappearing four patch, the disappearing nine patch. This week we dove into disappearing hourglass, disappearing pinwheel. So we have got a few quilts to show you, and this will tell you why we were moaning and groaning for the last week or two. Especially about... this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get you, we'll tell you that story when we get there. So the basics on the disappearing hourglass and pinwheel is you start out with your squares. Now, we've been using charm squares and layer cakes is what we've done. Mm -hmm. The five inch squares and the 10 inch squares. And the first thing you do is you take the two squares and you put them right sides together and you stitch all the way around them. Okay? And you're gonna back up and oh. interject here. Sorry about that. I know, I, you do that to me all the time but I'm gonna do it this time. When you have a back, when you need a background, I mean, if you don't have a layer Good cake point. that is all of background, you have to go and buy yardage. So what you need to have to be able to cut the equivalent of that 42 squares that you get in your layer cake is three and eighths yards of three and one eighth yard of background. Then you can cut it into enough um, 10 inch squares and actually you get two bonus ones. And trust me, sometimes those come in quite handy. Yeah, that's right. When you're done, you screw things up, you get to make another one. <laughs> and um, in keeping with that comment, we're going to regress back to something we started talking about last week, which is trimming. Unfortunately, it's like with rulers. 10 inches on one ruler is not always 10 inches on another ruler. You're talking about now, some of the, um, the companies, when they cut their pre-cuts, you have the little um, pinked edge. There's a reason for that. It's so that the things don't, or the edges don't ravel, so that you don't have threads hanging off. So there is a reason for it. But then the question becomes, all right, do I use the outside point? Do I use the inside point? Where do I go with um, my exact 10 inch or my exact quarter inch? So what I usually tell people, and it really became evident with this, is you may have to trim your blocks. When you're cutting yardage, you get a perfect 10 inch square. So if you've got those, take your um, pinked edge one, lay it on top and see what the story is. And if it's really, really off, and Beth, if you wanna come down and get a close up of this, we'll show you what we're talking about. So pretend this is a background. Yeah, so this was our 10 inches that we, that cut. we cut. So if you have one that has comes from a layer cake that has the pinked edges, you can see that there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. So you just kind of have bad. to pick your measure and be consistent with right. it. Right. And I personally found that it was almost easier just to whack those stupid pinked points <laughs> off because your mind was constantly going inside point, outside point, inside point. And I found that it was just easier to just whack them off and get everything the same size. Well, and with me, I, I mean, it was one of those things that every different company has different measurements yes. on it too. So it's not like you can just do an arbitrary Okay, this is what I'm going to do with these. You now you got to check it each time you use a layer cake. And within the layer cake, even sometimes. Yes. So I there usually would be found it easiest. I used my cut edge. Use the cut edge of what the. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. I agree with you. Unless well, this was. It? Yeah. <laughs> Unless the pink edge one was significantly so smaller. <laughs> yeah. But you still have to be consistent regardless. Yes, so. exactly. Well, and you've got fudge room because you are going to be trimming the blocks down. Right. So. We've got our two right sides together. We're going to sew all the way around all four sides. Then what we're going to do is with our rotary cutter, we're going to cut it diagonally twice. So you end up with this little guy right here. So you have your four um, triangles. I was gonna say and when you do your diagonal, remember that you wanna go from the corner of where your seam is in the corner to where your seam, rather than the point of the square to the point of the square because it may not be the same. Right, <laughs> it's that, that angle of your stitch line. Yes. Angle of your stitch line. Okay, so you've got these four little guys. Now I would love to say, yep, you're ready to sew everything together. Nope. No, you've got to <laughs> trim them. You got to pick them up off the floor and then you got to trim them. So there is a little bit of math involved here yes. and we're going to put a little cheat sheet in because <laughs> To be honest with you, I don't even know if I can spit it out right now what the math thing is. But what you want to do is the end result of this block, for our purposes right now, we want this to be divisible. No, not block. yet. The whole, whole block. block. When we put the whole block together, it's got to be divisible by three. So you've got to do some math. We're yeah. going to get into that and we'll put a cheat right. sheet in it. 
So we're, we'll show you how. So you trim your little um, triangles. Yeah. And if nothing else, you want to trim them so they're all consistent size. Anyways, because yes. they're not, even when you cut them apart this way, they're not going to be. No, absolutely not. I look, I mean, that looks like it's right off right there, isn't it? And we'll also address the elephant in the room. <clears throat> you have bias edges. <laughs> Yes, you, you have, have bias, bias edges all on the outside of these blocks now. And as some, somebody was told us, yep. if you're friendly to bias edges, they'll be friendly to you. Yes. <laughs> so don't be, um, don't be worrying yeah. about it. Yeah. You can't take too much advantage of it. If you start really stretching on them, you're going to have a nasty, nasty block when you're done. But if you trim sometimes everything, it works to your yes. advantage if you have to just tweak it a smidge. So what I did is I trimmed my, um, my triangles and I pressed them to the dark. So now I have, we're gonna start with a pinwheel block. All right, so I'm gonna put my four um, squares into my, well, for heaven's sake, this is a <laughs> flannel wall for crying out loud. This is, um, and I can't make it up. So you're gonna get those together and you will end up with this. I don't know if that's where it. But you're doing this one first. Yeah, I know, but I can't figure out where this one goes, Here. sorry. So once you have, and we're gonna go a little version on this one. Once you have it done, what we're going to do is we're going to take this dimension here to here and we're going to divide it. This is the tricky part. On this block, it doesn't matter. Right. There's a but couple normally there's no it on. does. But so we're going to assume that you have to do it. So we're going to take this dimension right here. We're going to divide it into three. All right. So then what you're going to do is take that number and you're going to divide it in two. Because what you want to do is we want to have three equal parts. But the best way to know where to cut this is to measure off of your center seam. So that's why you want three equal parts and then that one or this measurement divided in two and you're going to do it. And that is how you cut this block. And then you're going to take it and you're going to flip this piece like this and this piece like this. And that is going to be your cute little block that is a disappearing pinwheel. And what we did with that one, <clears throat> we used we used this, um, this is the Bramble Patch Charm Pack. And then I just picked what I thought was a very pretty Jeans background. Something with a shine to it. Yes, it did. This is an opalescent one. So this is the quilt we did out of that one. And it's a rectangular block, not a square block. And because it's we, very soft. Yeah. We only cut it one, well, in mm -hmm. one direction. Right. So that's why it's rectangular rather than um, square. Okay. Well, you get this cute little bow tie in the middle there. Yes, you do. Fun. Well, it's a pinwheel. Mm -hmm. It's like a pinwheel. Okay. So that's how you do that one. Now, the next one, if we are going to go. Yeah, let's go in this order. <laughs> is that, that's Our not best. a pinwheel. No. Well, I was going to go with the pinwheel where you have to cut it twice. Let's pop down to this one. Okay. Yes. So traditionally then what you're going to do is you're going to take this block and you're going to cut it again here and here, which is what we did up here. So we cut it once and then we cut it the other way too. And again, we had to do the little bit of math to figure out what we had to get that done. And then we're going to start turning the blocks and getting, and I think I even have to peek to figure out what I, what I, how I wanted to get this. Oh, I think this goes like this. Yeah, those go on the outside. Those go on the outside. So this is the kind of the creative fun part. You start playing but around. But they go in the four corners. You what? They go in the four corners. Oh, I remember this now. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I am just frazzled today. It goes like this. And then this one goes like this. Am I right? Yep. Oh, sorry. And then this one goes like mm -hmm. this. Nope, down. Down. Like that. Like that. Yep. I have too many pieces in my hand. <sighs> Where is it? Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> you have pictures to look at when you see these. Okay, you want to put those away yeah. then? Put those. You go talk. I'll talk. <laughs> Marty can do this. <laughs> Yikes. Um. Well, and I thought when Marty said she was going to dress the elephant in the room that she was going to say, Terry got all her hair cut off. Oh. <laughs> yes, I did get all my hair cut off. She got a little enthusiastic in the back there, but somebody did notice that I was a little bit irked by my hair last week on the video. So she wasn't surprised. So I thought that was kind of fun. So that, just by turning the pieces around, turning so the squares. A star in the center with a pinwheel in the center. With a pinwheel in the center. 
And this one we used underneath that block. We used um, one of Pam Buddha's. What's this one? Yeah, this was the Prairie Dry Goods. Yes, Prairie Dry Goods with a consistent background. And we ended up with this quilt. So as you see, it's a consistent background. And if you look at these, if you think about it, if you stop and not be here, you'd like a straight turn, turn, turn. It makes sense. It goes around in a circle, so to speak. The same thing with this, you get your pinwheel. Fun quilt to do. And again, you can start out with scraps, right? right? And if you think about it, this is a really nice lap quilt and you've got basically six yards of fabric into it. Layer mm -hmm. pink and three and an eighth. And that's yep. that wall and binding. And binding, yeah. Binding. And it also has a, um, a, a secondary design. design. It does and you could change design. this up even if you wanted to change the pinwheel out of the centers of each other, you could do that too. Yep. Okay, so that's another one. Okie dokie. Um, do you want to do one more pinwheel? Okay. I know you do care, but this blue one, what, what is this one? Not a pinwheel. No. So let's go, this one is a pinwheel. Right? I, I, I know, I, I didn't asked think. You. I, I didn't think. if we had to have an order and you said no. Well, now I did. I had Teddy. Poor Bob. She's there going, what the heck is wrong with these people? Now, Marty okay. did this one. Now, we're going to take this back to normal. Marty, would the brighter one be easier to see with? Now we're okay. Fine. So talk amongst yourself. Okay, you. so she's going to put it back to normal the way it is when you cut it. Um, remember, we cut it diagonally, and then we cut it twice, both directions. So she's putting it back. Are you putting it back the way it was? I'm trying. <laughs> I'm not succeeding. <laughs> Just put it the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> oh wait, a minute. no, I see where. It is. Oh wait, here's here's like yeah, it's supposed I to be. I got that one. I just thought it was underneath. Duh. We've I think we've done too we'll many. We've lost track. Yeah, we've kind of lost track okay. of what we're doing. So the same deal. You're going to measure your block. You're going to cut it into the thirds in both directions, and then rearranging again. Let's see if I can do this from memory. Because this was like three quilts ago. <laughs> if you take and make a point, going that direction. You're going to take and make a point going in this direction. See? That's, that's that was the easy, easy way to remember. And then you just have to make little stems on both the points. So that so way. So the arrows. That way. That way. What did some, what did Andy call this yesterday? This way and that. I this think. way and that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that one is just kind of a nice little funky design. I was just kind of curious if that changes things at all. Nah. I like that better. I don't think it changes at all. I don't think it changes at all. But anyways, we used the Hidden Valley layer cake on this guy. And again, which is a bit background. Do you want to show him that? <clears throat> I'm working too hard here, Cherry. I know you are. So that's the Hidden Valley. So it's basically all turquoise and purples and teals. And you picked. So you don't have to have a solid background. You no. can use a nice multicolor background, too. And this is, and again, we just did a, let me see, I think I used two and three quarters yards, did the border and the binding. And there's just no waste to any of this. Exactly. And well, there's a little trimming, but, well, but the whole point behind this is you are starting off with such a basic block like this and ending up with a block like this so that you're not having to piece a half square triangle, a half square triangle, you know, a bar block. You're not having to go through all those steps. You're not having to do that. And it's just the um, the fun of what am I going to end up with when I'm done. Okay, well, one more pinwheel block and then we're going to go on to the hourglass. Now this one is, this one was our little, <laughs> this one was a little bit of a challenge. Only, it, and it was our own fault. This is a basket block. And it's, you can, there's different ways to do it. You can either... Put four together, which is the way we saw it done. They just did four, like a big, huge block. Or we did um, we did it on point. We chose, chose to do it on point. And our horrible story to this was last night late. We had got it all, the center all together, and we decided it was too long and skinny. So we came in this morning and had to rip it all apart because we had intended to have it quilted also, and we just could not get it quilted. So anyways, we will show you the quilt in all its unquilted glory. Can you get it? I need to get it out. <laughs> Good glory. 
It's like a jigsaw puzzle in a way. Yeah, but who puts the jigsaw puzzle back in the exact same um, chaos that came out of the box? I mean, come on. I don't know, but what are you doing here? I am. I'm getting okay. it right back. Okay. You're putting it like the basket block? No, I'm putting it back oh. to normal so that you can show them how to do the basket block. Okay. I could just do it with oh, this other one. Right. Yeah, let me just do it. This. Excuse us, folks. All right, let me see if I can do this. It's going to go like this. And then we have this piece, and then we have this So this piece. isn't just a matter of turning things. You're actually rearranging all of them. Yes. And you have to put a little thought into it. You layer them well, all Once you up. get a picture, you're fine. <laughs> and decide what you're doing, and then you're really fine. So let's see, and this one goes here. The nice thing about it, too, I felt, was that you know how we always talk about our butted seams? We just love our butted seams. A lot of these, you could do that very nicely. You could get a nice butted seam. So the blocks laid really flat. So this is basically what you do. You take that, and then you take from one of your other blocks, and you put your flower of a different color in it. And you would, you would have the same background, but that'll give you a little spot of color. So that's, and again, isn't that a cute little block? And you mm -hmm. didn't do anything, stop, um, st yeah, I can't think of the word I want, anyways. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so what you do then is this is the quilt that we got done with it. And it's pretty darn large. We'll come this way. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the quilt we got out of one We're going to call this one Humpty, D Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Why? Because we put it back together. We had to pull it apart and put it back together again. <laughs> it was really long and skinny, and we ended up with a beautiful square quilt. Right. Um, and all it was was one layer of cake, the background, the three and eighth background, and two colors. sashing. Well, and then three. Sashing, cornerstones. borders, cornerstones. Yep. And not difficult. No. Especially when you know what you're doing. So I this, mean, we've seen this also put together that you can take four of the baskets and put them together in one big block. Right. So I said that. We had that conversation this morning. It was too. after we had this three quarters of the way done, though. <laughs> so. Yeah. So not we, happening. We didn't change our minds. So that was our. Oh, okay, so that would be our version of the pinwheel blocks. There's a lot of them, a lot of variations. Again, if you go online and start um, looking for disappearing pinwheel blocks, you'll find a lot of variations. Yeah. So then we want to, because we are getting lengthy here. Yeah, no. well, let's talk about disappearing hourglass blocks. Now, the difference between an hourglass and a pinwheel block is simply that you have taken your, um, your big triangles and you put them together raw or differently. Right. So remember, we, so the same thing, you're going to sew around them. Two kiss, the, two don't. No. <laughs> kissing cousins, remember that from last week? Kissing cousins, kissing cousins. It's, but you do the same thing. You start out with your 10 inches or 5 inches. You go all the way around it. You cut it diagonally. You trim them to the size that you want. And then you start playing around with them. So this was the, um, this is after I cut it both ways. And the way you can kind of tell the difference, remember we said pinwheel block? This one you end up with a pinwheel in the center. This one, you don't. You end up with a little four, four patch. patch in the center, okay? That's how you can tell the difference between the two of them. Yeah. This is um, an example of it, and we have this quilt. No, we're not doing that one. Oh, we're not doing on that the one. bottom. <laughs> oh, okay. So this one we did, and Marty, you're going to have to show how to lay it yes, out. Yes, I have to remember. Again. Okay. Okay. And this one we also used a batik layer cake, and we used this one. This is Sonoma Vista. So this is the, uh, a bit, no, again, another batik. And it's just a matter of flipping the pieces. So all of my four corners went to the outside. Yeah, that was, that was a real That's tough it. one. <laughs> so Marty, put it that in because you're, you're... Now, the other thing is, is uh, no, you do twist the center too. When she said because all... Because it makes it... Yeah, when you said all the four corners, so all you did is this was originally yep. here. Right. You just flip it out. Right. How easy is that? See, and once you get to here, again, it's just sewing a nine patch. You got yeah. nine patch back together, yeah. which is very easy. So let's show you the quilt that we did with this one. And again, this was a consistent background. And we don't have a name for this one other than Sonoma Vista. I think we're just calling it by the layer cake. Yeah. But again, this one really has that secondary design. Your eye almost goes to like this star block here. Yes. Rather than the block, which is here. So this one was kind of fun in that way. Okay, so that's Sonoma Vista then. 
Okay, and then the last one, which was probably my favorite, just because I really like the colors, <laughs> was actually this guy. And this one, again, was also a very easy one to do. You're going to take your corners, flip them to the outside again. It, it's pretty much every piece gets flipped, almost, uh, what would it be, 180? And then the center stays the same. So you flip all the outside corners, but then see when you flip these guys around, you start seeing that star up here. That's not right. That's not right. Or is it? Yes, it is, Marty. No, it's not. Turn oh. your center. Turn your center. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, no, it's not. There we go. There, there it there is. There we go. Now you see your star. <laughs> yes. Now you see the star. Yeah. But there was one of them. I really liked that one. And we used Pam Buddha's Farmer's Daughter yes. for this one. Yes. And so, again, a consistent background, which we tended to do on most of them. I'm always a sucker for a good star quilt. <laughs> you are. You absolutely I do like are. Them. And then we found this really nice, because they're very dusty colors in this layer cake, which was nice. So I found this really nice dusty red to go on the outside. And that was the nice thing about these, because you get a decent enough quilt in the middle of it that just one one width of you know fabric, and what we did is we cut all our borders length of fabric, and then got the borders and the binding out of the same length. So mm -hmm. it was really easy to put the borders on. And again, the point, if you look at these, and you really can't see it visually with the film, but the points are so yeah. good. Yeah, without they trying. They are so, without <laughs> trying. Really well, without but trying. come on up for just, I want to show you on this one. Like, look at how perfect that point is. There's no way you cannot have it perfect because right. of the way this is pieced. Right. It has to be perfect. It's not coming out. It has right to be perfect. Yeah. Well, these little guys are pretty darn good in here. Yes. Where those you yeah. do have to get those lined up. So. so that is our version of disappearing blocks. And we're going to go have the rest of the layer cakes and charms right. are still on sale. Still on sale for another week. And um, the, we'll have kits actually for all the quilts that we showed you today, which those will be listed. And then we'll have a cheat sheet for you to kind of to help you out with those measurements. And it may take a day or two to get the cheat sheet up because we no, we'll got a lot to do. Well, Marty, oh, Ms. Math over there. We'll I was throwing the phone away because I couldn't make the egg calculator on the phone work. So anyways, <laughs> okay, so that was our, we have, remember, the disappearing four, the disappearing nine, the disappearing pinwheel, and the disappearing, oh, we did you want to show? How, how long are we? Uh, 23 minutes. You're okay. Okay, okay. not Candy's. just the one. Sorry. Do you going to do the double? What? I don't, we don't need to do the second one, just the double. There's also, if you start researching, there's something called a, dis a disappearing double nine patch, I think it's called. And a friend of ours who came in one day and she saw what we were working on, she went home and she dove in head first. So she got this one done. It's on, the, oh, you got him? Okay. So she, within a couple days, just because that's the way she is, had gotten these done. That one is exactly what no, I did. Not. Not. She used two different blocks in this one. <laughs> she used both your pinwheel and your, and she I think she put it on point. Yeah, she put it on point. No, this is the pinwheel block that I did because it's got the four corners. Right, she just put it on point. Right there yeah, she straight. put it on point. So this was just, well, she used multiple backgrounds, but one fabric for the actual blocks. So this is just, this was just a simple pinwheel one. Right. Disappearing pinwheel. Yes. This is the one that's called a... Dis Double disappearing nine patch. <laughs> is that not a great kid's cool? quilt? But if you look at this, if you remember from last week, and Marty, there's a blue block right over there underneath the cutting mat. Over right there, I believe. Because remember how we did this block last week, and that's... No, it's not that one. Oh, it's not. Never mind, then. Oh, we never even showed that one quilt. What one quilt? This oh. one is the same as this one. It was the nine patch, where this was the block. So she's got the same thing. This is the block here. But and then what, you cut it again? I think you add another round to it and then cut it again. I don't yeah. know. I have to go and look on that one. 
but this is the same type of um, concept, but it's a double. Right. It double is a double disappearing nine pitch. Okay, and we did forget, we forget a quilt. a quilt. Sorry about that. Because you were mixing through the power. I know. <laughs> what can I tell you? So this one is another kid's quilt that uses the Color Me Friends. We can't let this little guy go. There was the Crayola. No, not the Crayola. Color Me Friends, I think, is what it, what it is. Yeah. But this was the, I have to stop and think here and look for the black. Because the black is here. It's a four, no, it's a four patch. So it's it's got to be a pit, hour, hourglass. So here. this was the hourglass black. And again, goes back to, you don't have to have a solid background. Look, we use these multicolored chicken feet and the um, charm square from the line. So you can keep color. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be plain and boring. Right. But that, Marty, this is the block right here? No. No, here. That's the block. I'll come up one. Right here. Okay, whatever. Kissing cousins again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just remember Sorry, kissing it's cousins. It's the only way I remember it. Yes. So, so anyways, that's okay. So that, that, that concludes, now we're done. <laughs> yes, that concludes our um, disappearing act for the last two weeks. So we're out of here? For tonight, anyways, good gosh, yes. Yeah. Sorry we kept you so long, but we did want to just kind of show you what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. So if you have any questions, you know where we are, pop us an email, and we will have all of the stuff on the website mm -hmm. and hopefully some cheat sheets for you too. All right, see you next week. Bye.